Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, I've got a pistol video for you here, and this one's going to be a little bit different. I, um, I don't do a lot of these top 10, top 3, you know, top whatever type of videos, because I think so much opinion goes into it, and there's so many good choices, and people have different needs, and, you know, that accounts for a lot of different answers. However, I talk about pocket carry a lot on the channel, and I've had people on the channel asking me, well, what are your three top picks for pocket carry? So, we're going to talk about my top three picks for pocket carry today, and we're going to get into all that in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos and you just haven't had a chance to do so yet, and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen, or if you're on a mobile device, you can just scroll down below the video and you can hit subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps us out a whole lot, and we really, really appreciate it. So, my top three picks for pocket carry. Once again, these are my picks. Not saying these are the picks, these are my picks. And before I get too deep into this, I want to kind of talk about the philosophy of pocket carry just briefly here and why I am a big believer in it. And it comes down to something very simple. Good example, the first gun that you have sitting in front of you here is a little P938 Sig Sauer. It's a great little gun. Um, I had a few problems with this one when I first got it, but they eventually got resolved, and I, I think it's a great pocket gun now, and I trust it completely. But is this the best Sig Sauer pistol that I own? Well, not even close. I've got all kinds of cool Sig pistols, you know. I've got a lot bigger, fancier ones. I've got all kinds of stuff in my arsenal, including my beloved 229 Dark Elite here. Now, as much as I like this pistol, it's big, it's heavy, it is bulky, it is not something that I can carry with me all the time. So as much as I like it, this thing probably even in the winter time isn't going to spend a whole lot of time in a holster. And that can be said for a lot of guns I have that I really, really like. So what it all comes down to is, how do I make sure that when I leave the house, I've actually got a firearm on me, something that's going to protect me? Not getting down into whether I've got enough rounds to fight all 15 ninjas or getting into you know, the super tactical mode, but just basics. Do I have something on me to defend myself? That's the philosophy behind pocket carry in my mind. So we're going to start here with the Sig Sauer P938. Now this is a 9mm semi-automatic um, hammer-fired pistol. Um, it holds six rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber for a total of seven. You can see that we are clear and safe with this handgun. So what makes this a good option? Well, this particular handgun, let's just say that you're used to carrying a 1911. Well, obviously this isn't a true 1911, no grip safety and some of the other internals are going to be different. But like a 1911, the hammer has to be back in order for it to fire and you can carry it with the safety on cocked and locked. This does have an ambidextrous safety. So if you're used to carrying a 1911, you can carry this little gun configured the exact same way. And so there's not a big learning curve for someone who's used to that kind of gun. In addition, you can see it's very, very small and it's very light. For a you know metal firearm with nice wood grips, um, it's just such a good gun and it has a really good set of the uh, the Sig Light night sights on it. So for a small gun, it has all the things that I would look for in a larger gun. And the other part is, is that it's a really, really good gun to shoot. Um, for a small handgun, you know, if I could have something extra on my wish list, um, I'd like that grip to be a little bit, just a tad longer. But because the texturing is so good in the frame here, and the grip is so good, my two finger grip, I feel pretty good about holding the firearm even with my larger hand, and it just shoots really well. So no matter what type of grip that you use on this little gun, um, it's a great one-handed shooter. As a pocket gun, that's uh, probably gonna be its main application anyway. So it's a good choice, and as I bring in the second choice, I'm gonna make sure we do a little size comparison here. 
The second thing I was going to show you is going to be the Glock 42. Now the Glock 42 is actually a little bit larger than the P938, which is kind of hard to believe. It's small as the Glock 42 is, but it is in fact, as you can see, just a little bit bigger. When you get down to the thickness, you see that the P938 is also a bit thicker than the Glock 42. So the 42 is longer, but it's thinner. And to me, when you weigh those out against each other, it kind of evens up as to how much firearm that you're carrying. A uh, quick safety check on the 42. You can see that we are empty and you can see that we are clear. So, so what do we have to say about the 42? Well, if you've carried Glocks, if you've used them at all, um, a, a lot of people understand that Glocks are pretty basic, no frills, but very reliable handguns. Well, the 42 is no exception. Um, this is chambered in 380 auto, which for me is a, a cartridge I'm completely comfortable with. I'm just as comfortable and confident carrying 380 as I am 9mm, that's just me. People can say what they want to about um, ballistics and all these different kinds of things, but uh, you have a six round magazine plus one in chamber. So once again, you have six plus one, so a total of seven rounds. I can't think of anyone who would voluntarily get shot with seven rounds of 380. So I think that from a defensive standpoint, you definitely have something that's good. Um, Glocks are very reliable from my experience. I own just about every iteration of Glock um, that you can get, and in the United States anyway. And um, I've never had any real problems with any of them. Um, this one I did a simple upgrade to the Trijicon night sights just because any gun that I carry as a carry gun, I either want fiber optics or I want true night sights. And that's just me, not just for nighttime, but I want better visibility in the daytime. And the good white dots there gives me both. Um, Glocks are simple, they're reliable, and um, that's why I think it's a good entry. So moving on to my number three. When I get ready to leave the house, it is very, very common for this particular firearm to be with me. And that is the Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight 38 Special. And a lot of people, it seems like when I talk to people these days, especially newer shooters, younger people, they don't, near as many embrace the revolver. And you know, and I understand there's a lot of complicated choices and there's a lot of fancier guns out there that are driving that. But there's something to be said about the simplicity of a revolver when it comes to concealed carry. When talking about revolvers, I often tell people, you know, they say, well, why would you carry, in this case, we're talking about a five shot 38 special revolver. Well, why would you carry five rounds of 38 special when you can carry seven rounds of nine millimeter? or even seven rounds of 380 auto. Well, I'm going to tell you why. I'm not making a choice between the two. What I'm doing is I'm ensuring that I don't leave the house unarmed. I want to make sure I'm very clear about that. 38 special um, can be a very effective round, okay? And they make a lot of different variations. This is a plus P, so obviously you can take the more powerful 38 special cartridges in a gun like this. It's very simple. You know, it's got a simple rubber grip and, you know, there's not a lot of complications. There's not a whole lot that can go wrong with a gun like this, you know. The only thing that I think is missing from this type of gun is the sights. You know, you've got your little notch there and then you've got your front post. But it's not that big of a deal because if you're carrying a pocket gun like this anyway, I would hardly think that your goal is going to be precision shooting over a long distance. If you're looking down this kind of a sight, it's presumably because you've got a threat very close to you, and that's why you have this in the first place. Hopefully you'll never be in a position to actually need your pocket gun out of your pocket, but if you do, I don't think a longer sight radius is really going to be an issue if it's a good shoot. So the other thing I like about revolvers is they take away a lot of question marks for safety. Um, I myself, I'm very comfortable carrying a lot of different types of firearms, which is why you see me go from a 1911 style pistol to 
a you know striker fired Glock over to a revolver. Well, why would I do that? Well, I'm comfortable with just about everything. But people who are looking for the fewest question marks for safety, something like this, a hammerless revolver that's double action only, you, know, you have to pull hard to get that trigger to move and to get that cylinder to turn, it's just a lot less likely you're going to accidentally pull the trigger on something like this. You know, even when your nerves are, are bad and your fine motor skills have kind of gone out the window, you're going to sort of have to commit to what you're doing, you know, when you pick this thing up and you present it in self-defense. So when you think about it, you know, any of these is a good choice. And once again, there's a lot of really good choices out there. Um, but when I get ready to grab something and go out the door, the main thing for me is, well, did I grab something and go out the door with it? Of all the choices that I have, and that's a lot of different, you know, firearms, what is going to be small and comfortable enough to where I guarantee it's going to make it onto me if I'm not carrying, say, a briefcase where I normally have a larger firearm stashed? Or if I'm not dressed for winter, you know, in the wintertime I'll carry, you know, Glock 19 or a larger pistol with with ease. But what if I can't do that? You know, are, are you going to leave unarmed? Well, that's the question you have to ask yourself, which kind of leads to this right here. So, you know, that's all fine and good, right? So we've got some good choices. Well, how do you really effectively carry stuff like this in the pocket? Well, I'm going to show you a few ways, um, at least the ways that I do it. Now, once again, there are a lot of different options um, for pocket carry. Um, I know a lot of people who carry revolvers just in their pocket all by themselves. I do not approve of this method, and I do not recommend it. Even something like this that doesn't have a hammer to snag, you don't want to leave your trigger exposed. That's just a really bad idea. So at bare minimum, I think you should do something like, you know, like a sticky. Something like this, you know, and these are fine for the waistband too on lighter, smaller firearms. I've got, uh, I've, I've talked about the stickies a lot. There's a separate video on that if you want to kind of hear my philosophy on a sticky. But if you're going to pocket carry, these are great because, you know, you see the shape of the holster and how it goes in. Well, when it's in your pocket, the material itself is tacky, as its name indicates. It's a sticky holster. So it'll kind of stick to the material and, and ride itself, but they have this little extra wing right here to kind of fill in the area where there's, you know, no holster. And that helps it stay upright in your pocket. So it's a really good choice and it's very easy. And this entire thing, you know, with ammunition and the holster, it feels like a billfold to me. You know, at least my billfold. Maybe I got too much junk in it. But it feels like, you know, a billfold or a cell phone kind of weight. It's not terrible. Now, obviously, it's more than that. But in my pocket, it doesn't feel that much different. Matter of fact, I very commonly carry this exact setup um, in my front pocket uh, when I'm wearing jeans. And it really makes no more of an impression than a, a cell phone would. So, the next thing we're going to look at here is the little Glock 42. Well, for something like this, I think that the little DeSantis gun hide here is a really good choice. You can see it's a custom fit. Trigger is covered, and once again, when it's in the pocket, it's in a really great position to access the firearm, and you've got this little extra wing that keeps it in place in your pocket. So when you draw... You're drawing out of a pretty stiff, pretty grippy little deal here. And really, these go back in the holster quite easy, too, if it's in the pocket. So if you're, you know, if you see something and you're kind of preparing and you got your hand on the firearm and you're not quite sure what's going on, it's coming out, you need to put it back in, well, it'll actually go back into these pretty well. So if you're in that situation, um, it's very good for that. Um, in addition, I was talking about the SIG. Um, that's my preferred carry with the little SIG as well. Um, I really like these, and I've carried this in a sticky holster as well, but the heavier ones, like the SIG, this is a little bit heavier firearm, and I find that um, this holster tends to do a better job of keeping the firearm straight up and down in the pocket. And if you're gonna carry in your pocket, obviously, that's kind of what you want. You don't want it flopping around. You want the firearm available so that, you know, if your hand is going into the pocket, you want to be able to 
you know, grab and come straight up out of your pocket without any complications. And I think something like this is a really good fit um, for that type of scenario. So, like I say, that's a few examples of how you can do it um, based on the three that we've been talking about. All right, so in summary, once again, let me reiterate, I'm not saying that these are the three best choices of out of all the guns you can have. These are not the three best for everyone. These are the three that I take the most often in the pocket. If I'm going to pocket carry, it is going to be one of these three right here 99% of the time. Do I have a lot of honorable mentions? Oh, you bet. You know, I've got my little uh, Kimber Micro 9 uh, Evo SP. That's a great little gun. Um, I've got my uh, P365 uh, Sig Sauer, my original one. That's a tiny gun that fits well in a sticky. Um, you know, I've got my little Ruger LCR 9mm polymer uh, pistol. I've got several, several that are really good. But what makes these the top three has really got to do with their overall, um, their overall weight, the overall print in the pocket, and my comfort with these weapons. I have a lot of different carry guns. And like I say, when I first got this one, it was not uh, definitely not on my list of guns that I trusted. I had some problems with it, which ended up being um, fixed by magazine issues, of all things. But um, it's a great gun now that we got that sorted out. Um, it's really hard to go wrong with a Smith & Wesson revolver. You know, I trust them completely. If, as a matter of fact, if I had to take just one and I could only have one, that's the one it would be because I feel like it has the fewest question marks for error and the fewest things that can go wrong. And then, of course, the Glock 42. The Glock family is, is reliable, and, you know, you can't go wrong with those either. But these are all of the proper weight and size. They're easy to carry. And I know that if I leave the house with one of these, I'm confident with what I have in my pocket. So once again, that's the whole philosophy is there's a lot of guns that are better, sure, a lot that are bigger and have better capacity, but they don't do you any good if you leave them at home. So if you're going to carry, make sure you carry every day, and I guess that's the message. All right. Well, we appreciate you being with us again today. We thank you so much as always. Going to be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, as always, everybody stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.